We'd like to say thank you to all of the speakers who have joined us for Women's History Month this year. Today, we're rounding up the series with an interview with Wikimedia UK's Chief Executive, Lucy Crompton-Reed. Hi, I'm Lucy Crompton-Reed and I'm the Chief Executive of Wikimedia UK, which is the national charity for the global Wikimedia movement. How is Wikimedia UK tackling the gender gap on Wikipedia and its sister projects? Wikimedia UK has been really um, thinking critically about diversity and the gender gap for a number of years. And it's really core to our strategy to try and diversify the content and contributors to Wikipedia and the other projects. Um, and within that, we're trying to increase the engagement and representation of marginalized people and subject. And that covers a range of inequities that reflect the lack of representation and lack of equality in our wider society. But the gender gap is an important issue for us. Um, and in some ways it's uh, a relatively identifiable issue because we have statistics and data around the gender gap, which we don't always have around some of those other content and contributor gaps. I think one of the important things to remember is that Wikipedia holds up a mirror to society um, and we do live in a patriarchal society and therefore um, there is a gender gap on wiki and in some ways um, that becomes amplified and compounded because um, the very nature of um, something being in an online encyclopedia confers a level of authority and so um, the lack of women in reference materials, the lack of women being talked about in a professional capacity, all of those things um, exist, but then that is compounded and amplified and really magnified um, on Wikipedia. Um, and there is the danger that Wikipedia therefore can really perpetuate dominant forms of knowledge. And I think that's why this is so important and also why so many people um, are engaged in trying to address it. Um, you know, we acknowledge that there is a gender gap on, on Wiki. So there are lots of activities that are going on to address the gender gap um, at a national level, but also internationally. Um, and as the UK chapter for Wikimedia, we work with lots of individuals, lots of groups. Um, we work with partner organisations, galleries, universities, museums to try and combat the gender gap. And there's loads of different activities that I could talk about. I will try and pick out a few examples. Um, one of the one of the longest running projects in that Wikimedia UK has been involved with in terms of the gender gap is the Women in Red Editathons at the University of Edinburgh. Um, and in two days time on the 31st of March, they're going to hold their 47th dedicated Women in Red Editathon, which is fantastic. Um, and that work at the university, which encompasses a whole range of activities, um, has been spearheaded by the Wikimedia in the residence there, Ewan McAndrew, um, and he's been based in the Learning and Teaching Directorate, done a lot in terms of um, digital literacy, introducing Wikipedia in the classroom. But he's really ran with um, this, uh, run with this issue around the gender gap. So he's done lots of work to encourage women contributing, uh, women um, both in terms of the student body and through formal classroom learning, uh, but also in um, the informal programme that he's developed. So Ewan appointed an intern dedicated to women in red editathons to support that work. And as I say, um, it's coming up to the 40 cent editathon. And that represents a really remarkable body of work, really. Um, 47 events where people have come together. Sometimes people might just come to one event. Some will come to lots of events. Um, and I'm using the word come to, but actually they've all moved online over the past year with COVID. They were previously in-person events. And people are contributing their free time to improve the biographies um, of women on, on Wikipedia and other related issues. Women and their works is really the prime focus of the Women in Red project. There are actually quite a few great examples of activities going on in Scotland, so I'm going to talk about a couple more of those. And one of those is the Protests and Suffragettes project that our Scotland programme coordinator, Dr Sarah Thomas, has been involved in supporting. Um, and that's a creative project led by a team of artists, local historians, activists, working to really um, recover and uncover women's stories and women's history and make sure that that's fully represented on Wiki. So that involves art walks, editing sessions. It's a really fantastic project led by women 
um, involving people of all genders, but led by women for women to make sure that women are well represented on Wikipedia. One of our partner organisations is the Science Museum, who appointed a Wikimedian in residence. Um, and during Women's History Month this year, they held a Women in STEM Editathon. And that's had some fantastic statistics um, with over 100 articles created or edited by the 13 editors who attended. And those have had over 80,000 article views. So you can see the real impact that actually a small group of dedicated people can make. And late last year, the Science Museum worked with Leeds City Library to run an event that covered everything from lexical bias, coverage bias, and was really trying to encourage women and others to address the gender gap in representation on Wikipedia. Another partner organisation is Humanist UK, and they held a major event last November, which was the Humanist Women Wikithon. And that was promoted to young humanists and humanist students, as well as to members of the Humanists of Wikipedia Network, of whom there are now nearly 200 members. Um, and they used the publication of an article on the Humanist UK website, Heroines of Free Thought, to draw attention both to the forgotten women in the organisation's history, but also to the significance of Wikipedia in addressing gender bias. And the article and, and event um, got a lot of engagement actually on social media. And I think people were really interested in, in that take on it from Humanists UK. I know Dr. Alice White did an interview as part of this series last week. And Alice has just been fantastic and hugely instrumental in training new women editors. Um, and that includes people who've gone on to really make an an enormous impact on Wikipedia. Um, so one really great example would be Dr. Jess Wade, who um, went to an editathon, found out about the gender gap, learned how to edit from Alice, and now has edited over a thousand articles about women or added new articles, and has garnered a huge amount of press coverage for this issue. She's absolutely fantastic spokesperson for the gender gap and also for the practical pragmatic way in which that can be addressed, you know, actually, spending your time um, editing articles. And of course, that doesn't just have to be women's time. People of any gender can commit time and energy to addressing this issue. Another editor that, um, another couple of editors actually that Alice have trained um, come to mind. And one is um, Hope, who is now the Wikimedia Residence at the Science Museum. And she first got to know about the gender gap and was trained in editing by, by Alice in one of the Welcome Library um, events. And also I was really pleased to hear that the, the, the young female doctor who actually created the first COVID-19 article was an editor who'd been trained by, by Alice at Welcome Library. So that partnership between Wikimedia UK and Welcome Library that's been going on for a number of years um, and through which Alice was initially appointed as the Wikimedian in Residence and now she's permanently embedded in a, in a part digital editor, part Wikimedian in Residence role, has just had such an enormous um, long term impact in all sorts of ways, some of which we know about. And then there's those stories where we don't quite get to hear about them, but we know that some or other, you know, some amazing woman who's been to an editor film that Alice has run is busy changing the world on the internet. And that's amazing. Another editor who Alice trained went on to create the first article about Jeannie Dick, who was an electrician a um, hundred years ago, and she electrified Winchester Cathedral in the 1930s to international acclaim, but she had no web presence at all. Um, so the editor that Alice trained created an article about her, a Wikipedia biography, and that's actually led to the rescue of an archive about Jeannie Dix and her company. Um, and that's also featured in events, exhibitions, um, within her hometown and she's now recognized as a person of note in commemoration within her hometown and the, the fact that that started from this you know a, 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 a female scientist going to one of Alice's events and then finding out about this woman researching her creating this article a whole series of, of physical events happening around that article I think really demonstrates the, the power that this work can have the impact that this work can have. Another really fantastic project that Ewan uh, led at the University of Edinburgh, but that lots of people have been involved in, is Remembering the Accused Witches of Scotland. And that project is actually now being spun off into its own charity. And that seeks to memorialize what happened to these women in Scotland. 
So the work of the Wikimedia in Residence at Edinburgh, Ewan, in ensuring that these women were written about on Wikipedia and then the creation of an interactive map driven by Wikidata has been a really central part of increasing the visibility of that period of history and getting those stories out there in the world. And actually that was a story that really captured the public imagination and got loads of media coverage. And the map was fantastic because you could, you could zone in on a particular area. I, I don't live in Scotland, but if you're in Scotland, you can look at your hometown and go, oh wow, two witches were, were accused here and actually, actually burnt alive um, because they were accused of being witches. And we now know obviously that that, that is, um, misogyny laden gender driven nonsense um, and whilst there were a few men that were that were tried as as witches the vast majority were women and it was underpinned by the the incredibly deep um, rooted misogyny at the time what are you most proud of i'm proud of lots of different things that have happened around the gender gap at wikimedia uk um, so i'm going to try and pull out a few examples but there are there are lots of things that, that i could talk about one of the things that I'm particularly proud of is the way in which our the makeup of our volunteers has shifted over the past five years. Um, so at the point that I joined the organisation, we had a target that a third of our lead volunteers would be women and we weren't hitting that target. Um, but actually, over the past four years, roughly half of our lead volunteers have been women. Um, and we measure this on a quarterly basis. So in the last financial quarter, 64% of our lead volunteers were women. I think that's really a testament to the work of the staff team and the volunteers in reaching out, bringing new volunteers in, making people feel that Wikimedia UK is a charity that's for them and that it's a project that they can really contribute to. So I'm really proud of, of that and, and of all the women, of course, who contributed their time as volunteers for the charity. Another thing that I'm really proud of is that the Welsh Wikipedia became the first Wikipedia to achieve gender parity. The English Wikipedia has obviously got millions of articles um, and many, many biographies of women and actually changing the proportion of women's biographies is quite slow work, even though that's really important. So we're now at nearly 90% of biographies on Wikipedia, on the English language Wikipedia, are about women. But on the Welsh Wikipedia, where there are over 100,000 articles, we reached gender parity um, a number of years ago. And that, again, is testament to the dedication of the team, of volunteers, of the editing community, and a real recognition by our as it happens, male program manager in Wales, of how important it is to address the gender gap. And I think this is, um, again, an important point to emphasize that it doesn't have to be women who are editing about women. Really, we absolutely need everybody to be engaged in this issue um, and addressing the gender gap, also addressing other gaps, other content gaps as well. At a personal level, I was really, really proud of our collaboration with the BBC that happened as part of their BBC 100 Women season in December 2016, because that was a huge amount of work to make that happen. It was an international project between the BBC's offices in, you know, their they're the organisation here in, in the UK, but also internationally. So BBC offices in Cairo, Rio de Janeiro, all across the world, working with local Wikimedia chapters um, and user groups and groups of editors to improve coverage of women. Um, there were over 3000 articles created or edited and a huge amount of press coverage. And I think for a lot of people, the first time they would have found out about there being a gender gap in Wikipedia would have been through the media coverage that was generated through that partnership. So I'm at a personal level because I was particularly involved in that. I'm really proud of that. Um, and proud that so many editors, new and established editors from across the world really took that project to heart and made it, made it happen in such an incredible international way. Another thing that I'm proud of is the fact that Wikimedia UK can have this impact beyond our immediate intervention. So we might um, support a project where uh, we work with a partner, we train that partner, they then run an editathon, and a person at that editathon goes on to create loads of articles and really, um, really spreads their wings beyond what we've been able to do. But that proliferation, I suppose, um, that we're able to instigate, sometimes through quite a small bit of investment of time, um, 
is really fantastic and I love to hear those stories coming back to me about what's what's happened maybe a year two years three years later. What would be most valuable to you to help Wikimedia UK's work expand or increase its impact? I think there are a lot of things that could help the whole Wikimedia movement to address the gender gap and some of those are a little bit intractable and quite difficult for us to influence. So one of the issues is a lack of reference materials. Um, It's not just about what happens during an editathon or in someone's dining room while they're editing away and adding adding an article. It's also about the way in which women are written about, the extent to which they are um, covered in the mainstream media um, and the systemic bias that exists um, in the way in which women's work is recognised. But there are much more practical ways in which people can support the gender gap. Um, I think that editing Wikipedia, and particularly if you're focused on addressing a particular inequity, be that the gender gap or, um, or another issue, It's really a form of knowledge activism. And I would like to encourage people to to think of it as such and think of it as digital volunteering, a form of knowledge activism where they can really make a difference. I think it's incredibly important that that everybody gets to access the sum of all knowledge, but it's really the sum of all knowledge and not just uh, the sum of a certain demographic of people. And particularly if we think that half the world is not yet online, all of those women and girls many of whom will be in cultures where um, there is still a very, very significant gender gap in day-to-day rights. Um, But to see great examples of women, um, classicists, women doctors, women scientists, I think is really, really important to um, enable and encourage and empower young women to think that they can do those things. Even here in the UK, where clearly we have equality at a legislative level, um, we know that girls, frankly, outperform boys in pretty much every area of education, including in STEM subjects. But yet at university level, that, um, that, that drops off and you have far fewer women studying STEM subjects at university. And then at, at postdoctoral level, that um, disparity is even greater. So what's going on? There's so much going on. Obviously, as, um, as editors and contributors, we can make a difference to that. We can't change the world, but we can change the bit of the world that we're responsible for. One of the things I feel quite strongly about is that where people have been marginalised, where uh, there have been, people have been underrepresented or misrepresented, it can't just be the work of that group of people to address that. I know that Victoria in her interview talked about the importance of male allies and I would reiterate that, that if you're, um, particularly if you're an established editor on Wikipedia, um, and you've probably got particular areas that you like to edit in, um, then I would encourage you to really think about how that bit of work would look if you thought about it through the lens of gender and through the lens of the gender gap and what could you contribute to addressing that gap. If you'd like to help Wikimedia UK to close the gender gap, please take a look at our website for ways to get involved or consider supporting us with a donation. None of this work would be possible without the generosity of our supporters and the hard work of volunteers from across the UK and beyond.